What's video? I don't know. Uh, I think the last one was like 14. Let's do 13, hopefully they're on 13. I think we did 13, but we can ask um, Marissa just got in. Call her. She's in your, your office right now. Hello? Hey. Oh, hey. Calling you. <laughs> hey, what, why are we on 13 on this? Uh, please say 13 because that'd be perfect for me. <laughs> I'm not sure. Wait, hold on. Let me check. Yeah. Look at your last one. Yeah. So I got it. Can I just um, miss out the way to get that advocate more time? Like, where, where? Sugar Drum? How far away? An hour? <sighs> we gotta fucking get docky soon, dude. Can't we do that? Did you talk to her? Yeah, she doesn't have any printer in here. Of course. Right. Of course. Thanks, Casey. You the man. We're on 14. We did 13 last time. Wow. Um, did your Steve go with Alex on the 10 o'clock set? On with Alex on the 10 o'clock set? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 All right. What, what is it like? Uh, I'm just going to run the FBLA. Yeah, and I'm going to run the leaders for our history. It's on my calendar. So <laughs> okay. 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 Who else is supposed to be here? I mean, they're all probably. Steven should be. Yeah. Did I see him? Can we, can we see him? Steven Sheely? Yeah, Steven Sheely. Oh. Cool. Oh. Oh. It's really cute. Either leopard or giraffe. I think leopard. Mm -hmm. Probably leopard. That's great. Okay, this is all I need, right? right Hey, we're waiting for you. That should work. All right, cool. Thanks, Casey. Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. All right. I'll yeah. just grab my, I'll just grab my water. <laughs> Great job, Marissa, yesterday. You're a freaking superstar. Mm -hmm. Isn't she? Yeah, I'll do it Yeah, I had a, a, a trial yesterday. And she's getting hired since she got promoted. Like, that's just, like, amazing. You're doing such a great job. Oh, good work. I can't believe that. Good nice work. Oh, thanks. Unbelievable. Good work. Killing it. Who's on there? Yes. Jay Moon. What's up? What's up? You ready, you ready to develop your leadership level? Jay's looking at you. Yes. Yeah. Looks like he's uh, programming some computers today. <laughs> Need your fix? <laughs> I do, heck no. I, I need my Mac fixed. I took it to Apple and, and they said 11 years old and they don't even make the battery anymore. So they they didn't want to fix my Mac. What? It's the same one Tommy has. We actually have the same computer. That's my love and relationship with Apple. It's like, like I mean, Apple phones. Everything else, Apple, you, yep. you can just. I'm on my way off. to give up. Like, I used Rich's phone on the call night. It was. So fast oh, compared to this, I don't even know what number this yeah. is, but it's yeah. it's done. But Apple is just like they're just sketchy with their 
with their practices. I've had, I've had yeah. <laughs> Always making everything. No. So yeah. with the apple hating here, man. Yeah. 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 Like they like it's like keeping up with the Joneses is already like a human thing, and then they like force it even further, you know. Like they make it, you know, like right, and they release it slowly, basically the same phone. Dude, in France, that's actually a legal Okay. Okay. So we got that one. Yeah, that's fine. Well, actually, yeah. so that's going to be ripped off for like three. Yep. Right. So, I mean, we got between that and that. I'll see, uh, I'll see what I can do with this guy. The 14th law of leadership is the law of buy in. B U Y. Buy in. The law of buy in says people buy into the leader, then the vision. When I hold leadership conferences many times, a leader of an organization will come up to me and they'll say, John, I've got this huge vision, got this big dream, just about to share it with my company, about to share it with my department. And they'll ask me the question, all the time they'll ask me this question, what do you think? Do you think that my people will buy into my dream? Whenever they ask me the question, I say, let me ask you a question. Have the people bought into you? Because if the people have bought into you as a leader, can I tell you something? There's good news. They'll buy into the dream. But if they haven't bought into you, can I tell you, they'll not buy into the dream. It's never happened where an organization has bought into the vision without buying into the visionary. So the first thing that you sell is not your dream. The first thing you sell is not the vision you have. The first thing you sell is yourself. Because when you can connect, goes back to the law of connection, when you, can, when you can touch a heart, you can ask for the hand. In other words, when you can touch them relationally, when they have bought into you emotionally, when they like you, when you're at least on level number two on the five levels of leadership, when they have bought into you, then they'll buy in the dream. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to always sell yourself, and then you can sell your dream. But it's impossible to sell your dream if you haven't first sold yourself. You see, every vision is filtered through the messenger. So therefore, when I hear a vision or when I have a dream presented to me as a leader, it's an absolute fact that every one of those dreams and visions are filtered through who gives the dream and who shares the vision. I've often said it this way. The leader finds the dream and then the people. That's the way it works. As a leader, I have a vision, or I dream, and I got this vision dream, and I say, okay, I've got to go find some people to fulfill it because I can't do it all myself because it's a bigger dream than I have. So the leader finds the dream and then the people. The people find the leader and then the dream. Most people go throughout life without the dream or the vision. So they have to find the leader that has a dream or a vision that's compatible with them. But in staying long enough to find out what the leader's dream is and what the vision of that leader is and where that leader is taking them, they also realize, I've got to buy into this person. I've got to like them. If I'm going to take a journey with them, I've got to relate to them. I've got to connect with them. They have to like me. They have to believe in me. They have to relate and connect with me. So the law of buy-in is absolutely huge because what we have to understand is that our job as a leader isn't to sell the dream first. Our job as a leader is to sell ourselves first. And with the selling of ourselves and the connecting with people, they connect with the dream. Again, how do I take the vision from me to we? The law of buy-in. If they buy into you, it will soon be their vision, not just your vision. You know, there are some questions, therefore, that I have to ask as a leader. The question is not only do I have a clear vision, the question that I need to ask is, do I love my people? Do I enjoy being around them? Do I have a good relationship with them? Do they love me? Do they enjoy being around me? Is it a good time when we're together? Because the leader, again, understands in the law of buy-in, there has to be the human connection before you can take them to a higher level. What I want to do to make this lesson real practical for you is I have what I call the buy-in process that I want to give you. I want to share with you what is the process 
that helps people buy into you as a leader and then buy into your vision. Here's where it starts. Number one, the people, the people see the problem. In other words, there's a need that people sense and feel and, and understand, and they say, oh my goodness, we have a need or we have a problem. That's the first step to the buy-in process. There's just what I call the obvious need or the obvious problem, step one. Step two, the leader sees the problem and the potential. Now, that's what distinguishes the leader from the follower. The follower sees the problem. In fact, the follower is frustrated and basically has no answers and basically thinks that his or her hands are tied, and so they're frustrated with the problem, but the leader sees the problem, but the leader also sees the potential. That's what makes a leader. Remember, leaders are dealers in hope. Where most people see the dead end street, they see more than the dead end street. So, one is the obvious need that there's a problem. Secondly, there's a leader who sees not only the problem, but the potential. Third, the leader has a plan. Now, this plan usually is a vision, but it's a plan. They not only see the problem, but they've got a plan on how to fix it. And in seeing this problem and seeing this plan how to fix it, remember, now they are beginning to be what I call tangible dealers in hope. It's one thing just to get up and say, it's going to be a better day. It's another thing to get up and say, it's going to be a better day, and here's why, and lay out a plan. One statement gives people hope for the moment. The second statement energizes and empowers them for the long run. So, there's a problem that's obvious. There's a, a leader who sees the problem, but also sees the potential. And that same leader, thirdly, develops a plan of how this problem can be solved. Number four, the leader believes in the people. As we studied in the law of buy-in, that you have to buy into the people before you buy into the vision. And by the way, that's two ways. The people have to buy into the leader before they buy in the vision, and the leader has to buy into the people before he or she can get them to buy in the vision. There's a buy-in on both sides. So this leader not only sees the problem, sees the potential, has the plan, but has bought into the people, which brings us to step number five, the leader believes in the future. Not only does the leader believe in the, in, in the people, the leader believes in the future, and basically, again, has great expectation of what tomorrow will bring. And step number six, the leader shares this belief with the people. In other words, the leader gathers people around and says, let me tell you what I think can happen. Here's the plan. Here's what I believe is going to happen. Which brings us to step number seven, the people. Believe in the leader's belief. I've seen this happen time and time again. The people believe in the leader's belief. Even before, quote, they get it, they've got it. They, they bought in emotionally to the leader, and so therefore as they bought emotionally into the leader, they began to buy into emotionally the leader's plan, the whole process. Now, when those seven things happen, the eighth thing is absolutely automatic. The people buy in to the leader. They just buy into the leader. Now, sometimes this gets to the law of respect because the law of buy-in is a cousin to the law of respect. They're, they're similar laws. They're different. One is based on emotional understanding and relationships. That's the law of buy-in. The law of respect is based on credibility and the ability to produce. So, so they're different, but they're cousins. Now, here's what I know. I can remember I was a leader of an organization several years ago of which I followed an excellent leader who had been in that position for 27 years. <laughs> and you talk about taking time before people gave you respect or buy-in. For the first year and a half, all I heard was how good the last leader was. And you know what? He was that good. Instead of being jealous or Instead of trying to pull him in, I bought into his leadership and talked about how good of a leader he was and how valuable he was to the organization, but I just kept doing my job with excellence. 
And what I found was this. <coughs> Almost two years later, I began to sense the law of buy-in. Now, nobody got up one day and said, oh, by the way, John, <laughs> law number 14, the law of the buy-in. There was no such law back then. I hadn't written the book. <laughs> but I knew they began to buy into me. I knew they began to buy into me because they started coming to me and asking for leadership counsel. They began to initiate questions. And they also began to initiate affirmation. They began to talk to me about how I was helping them and how they realized where the organization was, and now the organization was so much better. And all of a sudden, I realized, when you truly have the law of buy-in as a leader, you don't need to ask the people. They'll start coming forth, and they'll start giving you that buy-in. You'll know it because the people will share it. You guys got. I, I love John Maxwell, but when he smiles, sometimes he's got like the greasy, like Scrooge McDuck smile. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like the, oh, the money. <laughs> they have like to talk to about the law of counsel. Where is this? Call them time. The law of accountability says. Teammates must be able to count. I don't know how to work this computer. How do I get back to Jayvon? Um, go to the bottom. There, you go. I don't know how to work it. <laughs> Jayvon, are I'm you there? Delegates. Yes, sir. There we go, Javon. There we go. You're the star of the show, Javon. What do you got for us today? <laughs> Law to buy it. All right, guys. Well, we know when we want to really get something, you know, we gotta we gotta buy it, right? Um, and since I'm the star of the show now, I actually wanted to put and on the law of buying. No, I'm just playing. Um, but no, guys, I, what I got from it is honestly, like it, it was kind of like the law of respect um, where, you know, people have to buy into the leader. Um, and it kind of goes hand in hand with what we do. You know, like people have to buy us first before they buy the company and then they buy the product, you know, and then we, we get to close them. So um, I think it's pretty cool. Absolutely. They got to buy you, you know, they sell yourself to sell the dream. You know, Simon, I remember him saying, you can't sell the dream if you're driving a nightmare. So if you have your car's breaking down or you're, you know, Hey, come follow me and your car's dirty. At least clean the insides out. Especially back in the day, we had people in the field and if they're coming in your car and it looks like a dump. <laughs> do you think they're going to come, come on and work with you? Probably not as much. But um, I got to clean out my car. You know, yeah. you know things like that. Um, I'm out here in the streets. <laughs> Leader <laughs> finds the dream, <laughs> then the people. I run, say, Follow me, next time. <laughs> I'll catch up. All right, uh, let me drive your car. <laughs> what else do you guys have in your notes? Uh, you know, people see the the problems. You know, um, uh, you can't really. You you could do a. a as best as you can, you can dress something up, but people will obviously always see the problems, you know, um, and, uh, and, and then following that, obviously it's, it's your job as a leader to see those problems too, but to also see, you know, the, um, um, what did he say? Potential. The potential, exactly. The potential mm -hmm. in those problems. See those other people, they just see the issue. You know, and they don't necessarily, they don't see anything that good can come out of it. And so you, you, you have to, you have to be the spin doctor. That's it. I also like too that it kind of goes hand in hand with obviously building, starting to build our team now, like just the fact that 
you know, when you first start training, like, I don't know how it was for you guys, but it was like really, really, really rough for me. And um, having somebody that would just listen to me, like when I was like this close to like quitting, you know, and just like, you know, just telling me it was like, gonna be okay kind of a thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's like, you know, money can't solve all your problems, but it's gonna solve a lot. And a lot of the problems that I had coming into this job was, mm -hmm. I was in debt, you know, mm -hmm. major, major debt. And um, I think having, just something that really that they can obviously stand for as well you know however you guys want to grow your business but i i want to more so like focus on like recruiting and like changing others lives because it's changed mine like tenfold you know so um i think it's just like building your brand and like building something that's unique to you is like super important so when you have when you find the right people like you know as, as long as you have pure intentions it's gonna be everything's gonna work out so i love that Awesome. Good stuff. Love it. Dealer, help that. That always reminds me of Coach Gates. I remember him saying that like years ago. Like, you got to be a dealer and help. You know, during you know, you know, one of his talks. And it was probably from this, uh, obviously, this law. Every vision is filtered through the messenger. That just reminds me of even like interviewing you know, new people why I have to put on a suit today. First time, maybe, you know, maybe that first impression would have them come on our team more. So, you know, um, you know, look at the parts, you know, number one, especially leading the team. Um, me to we, just the team. I love my people. Um, good time when we're together and um, having a plan, had a vision, going to be a better day. Here's why given the reasoning. Yeah, the why, like, you know, um, with, uh, with, with believing in a vision, you know, you, you can't just like do a one, like do one presentation, like Tommy can't just come in here, like take a picture of his mansion and say, here's the vision, you know, yeah. it's something that's continuous. It's something that's like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, obvious. Mm -hmm. And what's great about this, we can work backwards and break it down. Like, I feel like other opportunities that you may have, you can't like work backwards with the numbers and actually the plan is concrete. You know, it's like we can actually, yeah, it's math. So we can figure out the plan and the vision. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What do you got from that? D Dalton, Steve? Um, I like when you said, uh, I mean, a couple of times, pretty much everything I like, but um, you said leader finds a dream and then the people, the people find the leader than the dream. And, you know, it's like, first thing you got to do is sell yourself. You said, or you can ask for your hand, ask for the hand, you got to touch their heart. Yeah. And I feel like it's super important to build a relationship with these people that we bring in to, so I feel like you're talking about why it's like continuous you know they might see that vision at first and you know have that belief but like obviously this job isn't like easy there's that three-month plateau everyone goes through and everyone's going yeah. to quit no matter it's either you didn't work hard enough you might want to quit or i mean everyone i wanted to quit you know it's just like i feel like if you don't want to quit something's kind of wrong with you in a sense like why? Like you know, you work hard enough, or you're not. You're like, just it's so just because it's different. It's different. <laughs> yeah. But when you look at the numbers and you think about, hey, let's get paid for the rest of your life based off helping people. It's like you always, you know, find a reason. Mm -hmm. Vasu, did he? He didn't tell us the story that he did quit, and he was going to tell his mother that he was going to go to law school and all this, and he was going to go one more day in the field. And he went like three for three and wrote like three or four thousand AOP and made all his money and he couldn't he couldn't quit. Wow. He was just like, yeah. Did he say yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you talked about that. Like, uh, no. no, he's not. Yeah. Mm. I feel like it because it's so easy for. It, I mean, it's not. It's just a hard job, and it's like mm. they get the mindset where it's like this isn't for me. You know, why am I doing this? And it just takes one day where it finally like clicks. And they have a good day, and it's like. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I see why we're not, and then that kind of change, changes your whole perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, if you make thousand dollars in one day, why yeah, or one well, client cancels, one client cancels on them, or no showed a bunch, and it could ruin your whole. So you have to kind of break yeah. through that for sure. 
Yeah. Your support system is so important too. Mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of people that I know here that didn't really have people in their corner, like rooting for them, you know? And that's like really sad because yeah. if you don't have, if you don't have at least someone close to you that's supporting you being like, no, you can do this. Like, I don't know, I, you know, that must be really, really, really tough, mm -hmm. you know? To have somebody like barking in your ear, like freaking Roy, he left, I think, because his like baby mama was like, you need to get a like, real job and like all this stuff. And it's like, uh, but this would have set the whole family up. Yeah. Except the real jobs, you won't make real money. Right. Like, like Uncle G. That's just like, over broke. It would have right. set the whole family up for life. And like, you know, it's just, it's like really sad to see people settling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's cool how we're like going over all this, these laws, and then like when you hear Simon and all the top leaders talk, it's like they all stems from like something like this, yeah. and they all relate. Yeah. You know, like all their like, sayings that they say. It's like I can see how they might have tied in one of these laws mm -hmm. into that. Mm Hundred -hmm. percent. Yeah. Which law is it? They don't know how much you know. They know how much you care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's for everything. Yeah, that's every law, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, we don't have to. Um, you got anything for us, Dal? What um, stuck out to you, man? I was going to say, like, just kind of a culmination of everyone's stuff. Like, just be human when you're like working with like someone. Like, let them know that you're human. Like, yeah, we're, we're in a position where we're not in our first 90 days anymore. We're not first, like, where they were coming in. But, um, you know, anyone under you, like, if they just see that you're just like them and like we all go through the same stuff you know they'll they'll be more inclined to, to follow you and like understand what you're kind of like getting at um because if they just see success from you and they just see like all the good so they don't see like the, the human part and the human aspect then that's where that buy-in they may be like oh well okay we've only seen the good so you know um yeah mm -hmm. just be human be like real straight up with people and like real with everyone Awesome. Law well, by. I gotta go. I gotta go back to thirteen because I actually have every every law pretty pretty decent. No, it's not gonna do my order or anything. So I'm I'm, I'm taking all these. Uh, you know, you know, you know, pass it along because this is my this is probably my second or third time through these, and this is the time it's actually like making the most sense to me. It took me like two or three times to like yeah really. Uh, but now I, it's kind of like when you watch your favorite movie, like you see your movie, and like, yeah, this is like 10 years ago. I wasn't and then you're like, you watch it like 10 years later and you're like, oh my, I'm it's just totally different. I was just in that time. I was in a different mindset or I was younger. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. Yep. You know, something yeah. like over your head. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Always, always like people said they already seen like a movie like four or five years ago. You know, I watched it like 50 times. Yeah. I always remember. I watched the Silver Lines play one the other day. Yeah, that's right. I thought I remembered it. I was like, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> Dude, I saw Scarface the other day, and I'm like, wait a minute. No. This is actually a much more sad movie, and they yeah. actually do a great job at showing about how sad that, that life is, about like how empty that is. But when you're like when you're young and you watch it, you're like, I want to be Tony Montana. You know, I want I want all that. You know, and then you realize how like sad he is the whole time, and like how you know. It's yeah, you, you know, he's way too protective of his sister. You know, he's like, yeah, just like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Back then, when I was a teenager, it's like, oh, you know, that's the life. You know, yeah, I want to die in a bullet, graze of bullets. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right, it's glorious. I know this was like, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was really what? Yeah. That's good. That's a long one, dude. I got an enemy coming, so let's rock it, Javon. Peace out. Already out. <laughs> <laughs>